Welcome to the second part of Finite Element Modeling Lab within the Biomems course. This lab is made to follow after Finite Element Modeling Lab 1. During this lab we will simulate parametric sweep of our model input parameters and extract estimated electrical conductivity values from varying input concentrations. The following topics will be covered. Further knowledge of studies and results in COMSOL by use of parametric sweeps, use of multiple studies with concurrent results, exporting results as tables from COMSOL, and lastly, implementation of global variable probes. For this lab, in terms of software, we will only need COMSOL multiphysics. Once COMSOL has loaded, let us open our saved simulation file from our previous lab. Go to File, choose Open, locate your file. If the saved file is without the study results, it will open a bit faster, but either one is fine. And click Open. In previous lab, we went through the use of boundary probes and globally defined parameters, which are helpful for us in this lab as well. In the model builder ribbon, in parameters 1, under global definitions, we should have our flow velocity and concentration fixed. We will now introduce parametric sweep to our study. On the top toolbar, Locate the study section and under study step, choose parametric sweep. This will add a new function to our study one and open its settings window. Let us start by varying our input concentration. To attach a parameter to the parametric sweep in the study settings, click on add. From the drop down menu at the parameter's name, select C in concentration. Under parameter unit, change it to moles per liter. Parametric sweep enables us to choose our parameters and simulate them with multiple different values sequentially. For our parameter value list, add these variables in sequence in the mentioned format. No parentheses and comma separated. Under memory settings for jobs, make sure to keep all solutions. Without further edits, click on Compute to run the simulation. Once calculations have finished, under Probe Table 1, Thanks to our pre-configured boundary probes for outlet concentrations, we have our missing values. Outlet top for a C-out 1 and outlet bottom for a C-out 2. Fill this table for your report. In the model graph section, our probe plot 1 visualizes the obtained values. The image can be extracted with the image snapshot or print button. In case of image snapshot, you have the option to configure the resolution with the preset drop-down menu. For a good layout for reports, include all graph elements. And for the output, it can either add it to your clipboard or print it to a file. Click on Browse, name it, and save. For every new image, you either click on Browse and rename it, or check the Create Unique File Name option, and just press OK. Having seen what impact 
or lack thereof, the changing input concentration had on our model. Let us see what effects can be seen with changing flow velocity. We have the option to change the existing parameter. We could change it to velocity, but in case we want to keep both, we can add velocity here and under sweep type select all combinations. This will go through all possible combinations between all variables. For example, five options and four options for concentration and velocity respectively. We can expect the simulation to run 20 cycles with different parameter combinations. However, in case we have more variables and don't need all combinations, we should split parametric sweep of velocity into another study. But before that, for parametric sweep of velocity, let us change the global parameter C in to something from our simulated concentration table. If a parameter is not specified in parametric sweep, it will get its values from global definitions. Next, on the top toolbar, open the study section and click on add study. On the right of the model graph, in the newly opened add study window, choose stationary and click add study and then close the study window. Going over to the model builder ribbon, right click on study 2 and choose parametric sweep. Add a parameter to the study settings table, choose v in as the parameter and change the parameter unit to milliliters per minute. Add these variables for our v in. As to not cause overwriting of our results from study 1. In the model builder ribbon under results, expand the tables option to see which tables are generated for our results. Right click on tables and choose table to add a new one. Change the label to probe table 2, for example. Next, in our model builder ribbon, in definitions under component 1, duplicate the two outlet boundary probes. Select the probes, right click and choose duplicate. To guide these probes to our newly added probe table 2, select outlet top 1 probe. In its setting window, Expand table and window settings. For the output table, select probe table 2. To also plot these probes on a separate graph, click on add plot window button. This will add an appropriately named probe plot 2. Lastly, rename the probe label to something recognizable for our velocity test. Analogously, Set up outlet bottom one probe. Now that we've added new probes, Comsol adds them automatically to both studies, which we don't want. Go to parametric sweep under study one in the settings window at the output while solving section. Open the drop down menu of probes and select manual. Delete the newly added velocity probes from the list. Likewise, moving over to parametric sweep under study 2 and remove the probes that do not belong to velocity. Now we can simulate both studies. Click on study 1 in the model builder ribbon and click on compute. Once finished, click on study 2 and click compute. After completion under results, we now have our probe tables 1 and 2 with the respective results. To manage the values more easily, let us export the tables out of console. 
To do so, in the top toolbar, open results section. Under export, click on data and choose table. Do it once more as we want to extract both tables 1 and 2. In the model builder ribbon, in export, under the results, click on table 1. And in the settings, make sure your table is set to probe table 1. Click on export. In the opened window, specify the file name and choose the saved file type. For our case, I'll choose CSV file. Next, go to table 2 under export. In the settings window, set the table to probe table 2. Click on export. Rename and export in preferred file format. Now, to try out a console feature, global variable probe. While we do not have any salts in our modeled liquid, nor are we using electrical physics, in order to estimate electrical conductivity between our model's variable input and either outlet, we will implement a logarithmic regression formula obtained from a sample of real salinity measurement results. For better organized results, in the model builder ribbon, in tables, under results, add a new table. Rename it to probe table 3. Next, under component 1, right click on definitions, choose probes and choose global variable probe. In the settings window of the added probe, change the expression to the presented equation without the y equals at the beginning as it is already assumed to be there. Natural logarithm in Comsol is written as log and base 10 as log 10. In this formula, y represents the electrical conductivity and the x, the outlet boundary probe in Comsol. Replace the x in the equation to the Comsol probe name that you have in the parentheses after the custom name. For example, BND1. Because Comsol checks for all units in the expression, it doesn't like the probe's mol per liter unit inside a log function. The simulation will still run, but it may take log functions of the unit conversions as well, and result in something unexpected. In order to remedy this, we should disable its units by adding flipped counter units, as they will now cancel each other out. Since the typical unit for electrical conductivity is Siemens per meter, let us add a unit to this as well. For our case, millisiemens per centimeter would be more appropriate. Set it also for plot unit. Next, check the description box and add a name to this variable, such as EC top outlet. Then expand the table and window settings. And for the output table, from the drop down menu, select probe table 3. For a new plot window, Click on Add and you should have an appropriately named new plot where it will graph the results. To simplify the process for the bottom outlet, in the Model Builder ribbon, right click on the global variable probe 1 and click on Duplicate. In the settings, under Expression, change the variable to the bottom probe, BND2, and edit the description. Next, go to study 1 in the model builder ribbon and click compute. In the following simulation, we will sweep only the input concentrations as already pre-configured in study 1.
once done, go to probe table 3 and you should see the estimated electrical conductivity results for given input concentrations in the probe table bottom right. The used formula is just an example taken from experiments with far different concentrations and more specifically concentrations of salt with different diffusion coefficients. For more realistic results, lab experiments should be done with similar concentrations to those used in the simulation for salt. Then another logarithmic regression line obtained via a plotting tool such as Excel and repeated in Comsol using the obtained function while using appropriate materials besides water and diffusion coefficients. For the homework, repeat what was done with the micropillar version of the model. Go to geometry and import the drawing file with the micropillars. For micropillars and other features that should not be simulated in physics, materials and mesh building, select only the areas where liquid will flow. Comsol will ignore unused areas. Another option is to right click on geometry and add delete entities feature. Set to domain and select areas you don't expect to be used in your simulation. And build all. As you import a new geometry or otherwise alter the existing, Comsol isn't typically able to keep track of previously assigned boundaries and domains. Some parts will be noted by Comsol with an error indicator, but many will not. It is a good habit to revisit and reassign all parts of the definitions, materials, physics, and mesh. Lastly, before closing Comsol, you can export the missing graphs and tables and save the simulation file. In conclusion, we familiarized ourselves with the parametric sweep feature, how to configure multiple studies, and saw how Comsol has some underlying automated aspects which need to be checked when adding new things to the model, such as new probes or new geometry. We experimented with the global variable probes by using a sample equation tied to another probe's output in order to obtain estimated electrical conductivity values. And finally, how to export graphs and tables from the simulation results. For reporting, try and run the simulation with the micropillars model. For both options, with and without micropillars, obtain the parametric sweep results from varying only the input concentration, results from varying only velocity, and the estimated electrical conductivity from varying the input concentration. Remember to make use of the image and table export feature to simplify your work. Discuss briefly what the results from the tables and graphs mean. For more questions, you are welcome to contact me through email. This is it for the second lab of finite element modeling.